Good afternoon to you. Mark Stout of HurricaneTrack.com here Monday now, February 26, 2024. A wild week of weather is ahead, no doubt about it. Very warm today in parts of the southern plains. Severe weather tomorrow. A big snowstorm for our friends out west, especially in the Sierras. And then we close out the month. We're going to be into March and then the march towards the start of hurricane season getting close to 90 days away now we'll take a look again at some of the parameters that we're watching that could shape the upcoming hurricane season as part of an overall wild week in weather that's the theme and it is it is just crazy out there look at this as we get started a lot of these pinks here that's your red flag warning a lot of wind and heat low humidity fire potential that's a lot of area where that could happen and the reason is we're getting a lot of warm dry air through this area and then out west we're going to start developing a pattern where we're going to get a major snowstorm through this area and severe weather tomorrow I'm telling you as we head towards spring things are going to start to turn much more and I want to say it dangerous in terms of the way the weather is going to behave and we need to be on top of it to make sure we are aware Here's from our friends at Fox Weather talking about it. Soaring temperatures could shatter over 300 temperature records to close out February. From the northern plains all the way up to the Canadian border, all the way down to the southern plains, Dallas and elsewhere. Very warm temperatures, well ahead of schedule. Some areas could hit 90 to 100 degrees in the coming days. Here's our friend Brian. I like his tweets. They're very dry, and you have to really understand them. I love this. I've been watching this guy for a few months now. Today's forecast, high temperatures in Texas. Seems warm for February. And you have to understand where Brian is coming from. He's in Alaska, a mooseologist. And if you haven't followed him, maybe I should follow him. But he has uh, all these cool... He shows up in my For You all the time. So why should I have to follow him, right? It's pretty cool. But he shows a lot of pictures of moose up there. But look at these temperatures, though. That's the point here. Yeah, these are not, you know, like heat index values or whatever. These are the forecast daily maximum 2-meter temperatures. That's about 6 feet off the ground to you and me. Yep, mid-90s or so. Wow, a scorcher. i got to get up with my friend Jeff over in Weatherford, Texas. Make sure all is well at his neck of the woods. I'm sure he's ready for it. Texas heat, it is coming. But this is a big deal. It's going to be a really sultry time of it out there very early for this kind of nonsense and that's going to help to brew up and be one of the ingredients for some major severe weather in the coming days not today though luckily let's point out what we do have going on out there a little mid-latitude cyclone action way out here in the atlantic elsewhere in the lower 48 mostly clear skies for much of the eastern parts of the country some cloudiness subtropical jet pumping in moisture to parts of southern california here's a cold core system Cold air aloft, snow in the high elevations, rain down below, windy conditions at the coast. The El Nino-induced uh, weather, the whole pattern that we've had because of El Nino, still cranking. We've got to lose that El Nino to get that to go away. We've got a little over a month to do so, so that we can roughly clear out a swath like that for the great eclipse that's coming. We've got to change the pattern. We can't be having these subtropical jet streams coming through with all this cloudiness and whatever. That needs to go away. We'll talk about that more as we get into March. But this is the setup now. If we look at the temperature pattern here, this is really interesting from the Tropical Tidbits site. Look at all this very warm weather here in the oranges and reds. Very warm relative to average. We can look at the, uh, these are the actual temperatures. But when you compare this to the average, you look at this thermodynamics and the 850 millibar, that's about 5,000 feet up anomaly that's very warm at 5,000 feet in the atmosphere but even down where we live at the two meter also warm and it is anomalously so this is what's so staggering most of the country now in the warm air. look at this parts of Florida below normal what's up with that but yes it is very warm relative to average across much of the lower 48 and then that changes and look at that big contrast there this dividing line right through here that's going to usher in the potential for some severe weather and we need to address that as we go forward and we shall let's do it now in fact so the gfs over the next several days let's watch how this evolves storm system comes in and then tomorrow this is the area area we're going to have to really watch here 
parts of Illinois, Indiana, the dynamics are in place for a significant severe weather outbreak. How much so? Where the areas get the worst of the action remains to be seen, but you need to be paying attention. Yes, even in late February, we can get some rather nasty storms to develop, including hail producers, tornadoes, lots of lightning, heavy rain, straight line winds, all that kind of stuff. And look at the dynamics of this system. It is still winter. It's trying to fight back. A lot of energy coming in, cold air trying to drain down, even some snow mixed in, blended in with the front. We have to be mindful of all of this as we head towards spring. A period of change definitely coming up for the lower 48 as the springtime severe weather pattern sets in with lots and lots of dynamics in place. Then out west, and I want you to, let's just do it. Let me just switch it out west. There we go. The western U.S. as we get towards the latter part of the week, watch this. This big time storm comes in with a lot of cold air. Yes, I had to look and see if I was seeing things. It's hard to tell here. Let me use black to make this show up better. That is purple in there indicating extremely heavy snow rates, very high snow rate, maybe on the order of six, seven, eight feet of snow in parts of the Sierra. I'm still debating, trying to figure out with all the stuff I've got going on in my work, in my personal life, which is all good. There's nothing bad right now, but I do have a personal life. I've got a family and I got a lot of projects that I'm working on. I'm juggling plates in the air, I feel like. And I would love to go out and be there in Truckee, California, with that kind of snow coming down. There's still time. I got about a day to make up my mind. I got to juggle some things. Even if I'm not there, social media will take care of it. I mean, the world doesn't revolve around me, right? Of course not. But we will see what happens from people that are there reporting on what's going on, even if it's just on social media. But that's some purple in there, meaning incredibly heavy snow even down to some of the valley floors here. I was reading National Weather Service Sacramento. Snow levels are going to get down anywhere to close to 1,500 feet. And for those of you back east that don't know what all that means, that's that freezing line lowering enough so that we can get some snow closer to the valley floors out there. This is great to see for the water needs out west and the snowpack and all that, but a big time disruptor. That's the problem. If I go, I'm stuck at that hotel in Truckee. And I know like, there's worse places to be stuck, but you really can't go anywhere. They do the plowing and whatever, but it's hard to get around. It really is. And Caltrans and the folks out there, they don't mess around. And if you're not supposed to go anywhere, you can't. They don't let you if it's um, you know discouraged or even forbidden, so to speak. And sometimes nature is the one that does the forbidding because there's just too much snow. So we'll watch that. But look, it comes in dumps a tremendous amount of snow, and then that system moves out into the plains, and then we get basically a week out from now, and we are in the first few days of March. Let's expand this back out to the full view of the lower 48, and you can see how dynamic the pattern is over the coming week with one storm system coming in and then another one, and then you can start to see the makings here of this big Bermuda high that wants to set up shop and pump the moisture in around the backside of it, that will start to inform the severe weather season in March, April, and May across this area. Not quite yet, but we're getting there. And we're going to have to watch that very closely over the coming days. And that's the key here. Bring me back on for a minute. I say this often with everything going on in the world, and there is a lot of stuff pulling at you, demanding your attention. you got to pay attention to the weather, whether you are out west, you're in the nation's midsection, you're in the east, you're in the you know, deep south there, parts of the southern central plains where all this heat is coming this early, upper 90s possibly for parts of Texas. Somebody might even break 100 today. Wow, there's a lot going on. And you just got to watch, you got to pay attention so the weather doesn't swim up and bite you in the rear end, right? Right. This is a great tweet here. I just saw this from Stephen, Stephen, sorry. And I thought, wow, what a great graphic. I know he didn't create the graphic, but he tweeted the graphic, and I love the way he put this. 86 to 21 in 12 hours around St. Louis tomorrow. And I think Fox Weather has somebody in St. Louis, if I'm not mistaken. Was it Steve Bender or somebody? Stephen Morgan? Somebody's there. One of the people are there for Fox Weather covering it because, yeah, 86 today, and then tomorrow the front comes through, and it's going to be in the 20s. And the weather that changes between that 
that battleground, that brings me to this. Today, not much to worry about, marginal risk of severe weather up and around the lakes, but it is tomorrow. A slight risk today, I think we'll see a part of this get an enhanced put in there somewhere, and it just means you got to be paying attention, especially in a part of the country where severe weather is common, but usually not at the end of February. So you got to really be paying attention to what's happening tomorrow. The tornado threat 5% today, meaning as we look at it today for tomorrow, it's 5%. That might go up as well. The wind threat and then the hail threat, pretty significant there. You just got to watch out. You got to be paying attention. Be on your toes. Be looking at your phone for all the right reasons during this and be aware. All right. Because again, you're no good to me if you don't exist anymore. That won't work. I'm trying to help you out. So please pay attention. And it keeps your family happy too if you're nice and safe. I assure you. All right. Now, on to tropical stuff as we get closer and closer, a little over 90 days away until the highly anticipated start of the Atlantic hurricane season because of what is happening in the Atlantic Basin. Record warmth again. We saw that in 2023. It is back again this year. The Atlantic Basin running way warmer than we are used to seeing in the long term. And it's really interesting. Look at that. There's a little zero sitting up there or a donut. That's pretty cool. I just noticed that. Ah, donuts. Where's Homer Simpson, right? But seriously, this is concerning, but not enough to really worry about just yet. This is one of the many puzzle pieces. We've got to balance this. I know there's a lot of info coming out there. I'm talking about it fairly frequently that we have to watch this. But, you know, it's still only the 26th of February. Not much to even consider right now in terms of where something might end up. We could have everything stay well east of land masses. Wouldn't that be great? But in case something does slip through, we need to be ready. And as I mentioned in last week's video, once we get to April, we're really going to start talking about that. What can you do with this information? For now, it's interesting. It's helping to sort of understand where we might be headed. And we have the clim uh, climate models that are suggesting an active season. But as of today, the very warm look to the Atlantic Basin remains. We are chiseling away at the El Nino in the Pacific and the march towards June 1st and all that that implies continues. This is another way to look at these anomalies. This is the Richard Reynolds method or just Reynolds method for short. The daily anomalies over the last several days. Wow, look at all those twos and threes even in there. And just the large area of one Celsius that stretches all the way out here that in and of itself, to have all of the tropical Atlantic at least one degree Celsius warmer than average is enough to say, yeah, I think we're going to have a very busy season and we all need to be paying attention to that and thinking about it in whatever way makes the most sense to us. And again, we'll talk about that more and more as we get into April and closer to the season. Some things that will make a lot more sense as we get closer. Finally, well, not finally, we've got a couple more pages here, a couple of tabs. The subsurface, now let me drop me back out. This is really, maybe, this is really remarkable. The loss of the El Nino, if I refresh this and it starts the GIF animation over again, look at what happens. That subsurface cold pool really starting to become more prevalent. We lose all this stuff up here, almost entirely eroded away all that warm anomaly. And the El, the El Nino is just, it's, it's done. It's out of here. And we're going to transition I mean, not technically, but it is certainly on its way. And uh, the door is about to close, put it that way. And then that's why the models are all showing this very quick um, decline of the sea surface temperature and the, the, you know, the actual temperature and the uh, anomalies in the, the tropical Pacific. You know? And so La Nina is almost a certainty, as close as you can get with weather anyway, right? As all of the guidance is showing a cooling Pacific and a very warm Atlantic. None of that has changed, and if anything, everything just to be seems to be a little bit more solidified um, towards that possibility as we end the month of February. Now, once we get into March, and my next update will be on March the 4th, unless I go out to Truckee, which maybe it still will be. I don't know. We'll see. Ah, it's, it's, that's a tough call. I gotta I gotta talk to some people, figure things out. But regardless. I will be doing an update next week, and we will be in March. That's my point here, and we have a lot to discuss on that update. I have a huge announcement 
for a very exciting, monumental new project that we're going to unveil in March. And I'm going to announce that hopefully on Monday. If I'm, I got to be near all my stuff, my computers, and be able to do all this, you know, updating and whatnot. And if I'm just on my laptop, I want to wait and do it later. But we'll see. I don't know if I'm going to go to California or not. We'll see about that. Stuff's going on, like I said, that I'm just very, very busy here. But all that notwithstanding, one way or the other, whether or not I do it Monday or Tuesday of next week, we're in March, and now we're going to be within 90 days of hurricane season. We're going to be closer to severe weather season. And the weather is going to really start to become more and more important. The heat's going to start building more and more. We're seeing that very early now with what's happening today, especially in Texas. So once we get to March, we are really going to start to ramp things up here at the whole hurricane track enterprise. We've got meetings going on later in the month of March. We've got a conference or two. I'm going to be at the National Hurricane Conference in Orlando at the end of March. And then, of course, the National Tropical Weather Conference the first week of April followed on April the 8th by the eclipse. And then we're less than 60 days from hurricane season. So you see what I'm saying? Stuff is happening fast. Time seems to be moving faster when we're busy. All right, so be ready. Lots of stuff happening, lots of good news coming your way, and a big project to announce next week. All right, as for this week, a wild weather week ahead. Be safe out there, be careful, be aware. That's all I ask. Because I want you back to watch the next video. And when you do so, if you haven't done already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you do the notification bell so you can get alerted, when, especially when we're live. Because we're going to do a lot of live streaming this year, especially during hurricane season. And we're on Twitter, at Hurricane Track. Yes, I know it's called something else, one of those letters of the alphabet. But to me, it's always the white bird with the blue background called Twitter. And we're on Patreon. Absolutely, you can join for free. See what's going on over there, and when you are in the position to fund a project or you know, want to hang around for a while and be a sustaining member, you can. I love that Patreon has allowed that option if the creator, that's me, wants to uh, allow it, and we do. So join us on Patreon as well. All right, now I'll sign off, as always, from all of us at Hurricane Track. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Suttoth, either from California or from here. I'll talk to you again next week.